This is one of the most expensive 172 scale fighter aircraft you can buy from Airfix. Let's do a first impressions and understand why. Welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to today's first impressions video which focuses on this Messerschmitt ME262B uh, 1A slash U1 whatever that means it's 172 scale it's a 2017 tool and this is the 2018 re-release of that kit which is still on sale on the Airfix website so it's still a current kit and as kits go, it's one of the more expensive 172 scale fighters. In fact, the price currently at around about £24 is up there with the Bowfighter and the Mosquito and basically larger, seemingly more complex aircraft. So I'm intrigued to know why this is so expensive when you know you can buy a Mustang for 11 or £12. Let's have a look inside the box and understand that. What we do, however, the kit number is A04062. It's a skill level two, um, came with one uh, flying hour, has our usual red box, the now older format red box, with our um, uh, paint um, examples on the side here and a little bit of history and um, our call out of paints. Uh, and then the usual format and it does tell us here that it's model design and tooling 27 decal schemes and pack design 2018 made in India and that we've got cartograph uh, decals so all good let's start with the instructions, instructions the usual format for um, airfix um, we've got a stapled a4 uh, color mat um, paper booklet with our build instructions on the front here we've got some aircraft specifications um, and a bit of history no doubt telling us that the me262 was the world's first operational uh, jet aircraft um, here it tells us that we need to be washing our parts before we start um, and then we've got our assembly key here um, which it's always worth keeping a, a, a quick eye on these because they do change these um, symbols from time to time and they have recently changed one or two of them okay first page uh, step one and we've got um, a tub style um, cockpit um, looks fairly simple at this stage um, with um, our instrument panel and um, pedals going in two fairly basic looking seats um, and then we've got some more controls going in um, the flight stick um, and that I'm gonna guess is the top yes we can see that and we do have um, two crew members to fit in a um, couple of sets of decals to go in the front on the um, instrument panels there and um, then we've got some structural parts which are going to um, help it slot into the correct place inside the fuselage. So that's our first 10 steps. As we flip over, um, step 11, and we have our two fuselages going together. Uh, we can see the tail's already moulded in largely. Um, and then when we get to step 12, we've got an option. If you're fortunate to have one of these Airfix stands that they haven't sold for years, um, strange that they've they put that in. I think we've mentioned that before. Um, so there is a bit of drilling to do if you're going to put it on a stand, and, and here's your time. Uh, we do have a, a small internal uh, part there that's hopefully adding some appropriate detail to the inside of the gear bay there. Um, so a single piece lower wing um, going into the um, hull, there's no um, spars or anything, uh, no airframe there for additional support. 
Um, and then we are putting the upper wings on and we have um, the uh, forward uh, wheel gear bay um, already moulded into that forward section so that's going in. Now you do have an empty compartment which is handy because you need to add 7 grams of weight because um, you've got a nose wheel you need to make sure that it, it sits correctly unless of course you're mounting it on the stand in which case you don't need to bother. Um, a bit more drilling out to be done there. Um, it says A, so I imagine that must be the paint scheme and, and, and that means that you have a drop tank uh, potentially. So you step 40, so we'll, we'll come across that in a minute. Then we're adding the uh, two tail sections um, and then the third bit, there is a, a picture there just to basically tell you to make sure that they're straight and level. Um, then we are building up the engines, um, the two jet engines. Um, yeah, I'm not overly complex, but what they've done is the two engine um, sides. So your seam's going to be at the top. Um, uh, we've got an internal butt at the front, so that should look quite good when paint painted. We can see the rotor blades. Um, and then we've got the um, other end of the engine being built up separately and added on. So that should should look right for the scale, no doubt. Um, and it is telling us what parts should be what colour. So there's no doubt about that. And probably easier to paint these at this assembly point as well. Okay, step 26. Add in the engines, um, blank, a single blanking plate for the landing gear um, at the back there if you were uh, having the, the wheels up and then another one there. Quite an aerodynamic little aircraft, isn't it? I always find the tr strange triangular shape quite intriguing, actually. I think it's quite an interesting looking aircraft. If you're doing it wheel down, then we've got a two-part um, gear and gear door. Um, so that looks okay, separate wheel. Um, wheel seems to be all moulded in, including the hub, but does have the little location pip that Airfix like to put on. Um, and then the other gear door goes in place. Then we're doing the um, wing uh, uh, gears as well. Uh, again, they're two parts. So yeah, that all looks okay, doesn't it? Looks quite nice. And then a single piece for the centre bit, uh, which makes that fitting nice and easy. Um, it looks like for the back wheels, we've got separate hubs. Lovely, that means we can paint all that. Although, we're probably going to have to paint that little key as well. We'll get a better look at that when we look at the uh, instructions. But it does look like we've got a weighted tyre as well. So very nice. Then we've got um, drop tanks mounted on each side of the uh, forward gear there. Yeah, looks good. Step 41, we've got options with the canopies, um, open or closed, um, but it only really shows you the instruction for building them closed. I guess you have to just sort of balance it on one side. I have no doubt there was some supports or something to stop it over opening like a piece of uh, chain or something to stop it opening too far so you might want to do a bit of research and a little bit of scratch building there um, it's telling us to fill these two little nose holes so i'm not quite sure what they were originally intended for ah step 42 makes that clear if you're not having it in this sort of the night fighter gauge with these extra antennas on. Okay, interesting. Um, then we've got our uh, radio antennas going on. Um, shows you a nice little picture there um, of how they should be orientated. Um, so 42 steps. Doesn't look a massively complicated build to be honest. Um, probably the trickiest thing is balancing these and unfortunately the print's not so good here that one stays closed, that one um, and that one can be shown as open because you've got two crew members. Right then, let's have a look at the paint schemes. So 
we have two paint schemes. The first one um, coming out of uh, Salzburg, Germany, May 1945. And I guess this is the sort of typical, when you think about the, the ME262, this is the paint scheme you sort of think about, the, the little, the grey wiggly lines and the, the splinter wings. Um, although what it's telling us here is this is in um, British ownership. So we've still got German markings underneath and, uh, and on the wings, but we've got these British markings that we can swap them out with. And it says here, uh, additional decals are provided for the aircraft captured by the Royal Aircraft Establishment Aerodynamic Flight Schelsberg, Germany, summer 1945. So you could use the same aircraft and swap out uh, for the British markings, which would then uh, give you an additional version. So really you've got two, ver paint, two versions there, not, not just the one. Uh, so yeah, interesting. And a black underside. You'd probably do it dark grey, I imagine. And then paint scheme B, which is certainly the simpler paint scheme, uh, is Czechoslovakia 1947. So in Czech service, um, with the Czech markings, um, pretty much all over slate grey. Um, there is quite a few colours called out there, isn't there? Gunmetal, matte black, gloss black. Um, and then blue, what's the blue for? I don't see where the blue is. Oh, there's a tiny, tiny spot there that says 89. So it's a little, little dot. Interesting. Okay, that's our paint schemes. That's our instructions done. Uh, then we've got decals. So uh, we've got a separate stencil sheet quite a lot of decals for a small aircraft uh, i like that because i like um doing decals so all good i um, and these must be common to both so yeah we've even got decals for on the on the wheels there so plenty of decals to be going at yeah i like that very much um oh gosh and we've got even more decals on this side is this one of you. Ah, right. Okay. So, decal options, uh, stencil options for option A, and then also for uh, in check service, you've got clearly different ones. So, that's partly why this is more expensive than you've got a lot of decals in here. And we know that decals can almost be as, as expensive as the plastic sometimes, or in these smaller kits, particularly. Um, your balance is plastic and, and decals. So, okay, some really nice uh, information, clear instructions. Let's have a look. Starting with the uh, decal sheet, um, we've got the uh, usual um, airfix uh, approach of common decals, then scheme A, and there's a lot of decals there, and scheme B, equally a lot of decals. Um, a lot of them look fairly common, actually. You know, the little warning triangles and bits and pieces. So, yeah, I do, makes you wonder if you could reduce the number of decals a little bit. But, you know, the dotted lines are different colours and, and so on. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, nice. It's an interesting option to have the uh, captured British markings. So, really, you've got three sets of markings there. So, that's nice. And the cartograph, so we know we shouldn't have any issues. Shouldn't. Okay, sprue A is the first of three um, grey plastic sprues in the box. This is the largest of the three sprues. And what we've got is our engine nacelles there. Um, we've got the, the lower wing and nose sections, which actually are quite detailed. There's a lot of detail inside there, actually. That's really nicely done. Um, we've got our seats. Um, one of our um, crew members um, and our tyres, which do have a bit of tread on. Okay, so 
Um, as I look at it, I don't see any um, flash at all, and I don't see any sink. There is a little bit of heavy seam around the figure who's not particularly uh, sharply molded, but actually, this is the new harder plastic. You can tell this plastic is harder. Yeah, definitely. Um, so actually the molding is quite crisp. Um, as the plastics got harder, the moldings got crisper. Um, so it doesn't look particularly soft molded, but at the same time, I wouldn't say it was very crisp detail. Um, so we're sort of at this halfway point where you've got um, not very crisp parts that are nicely molded, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, the seats look basic, um, but there is nice detail on the um, outside surfaces. We've got rivet detail, countersunk lines. Um, invariably, I think we're going to have to agree that these are a bit heavy. Um, these lines are probably a bit heavy, um, but it's, uh, it doesn't bother me particularly. Right, let's have a look at these parts then. So, engine nacelles. That's our uh, blanking door for gear up. Then we can see we've got our tyres there. With a very, very mildly moulded in tread. Part of our engines, our nose wheel moulded in, uh, hub. Interior part there, some more engine parts, including our rotor blades. Our wheel hubs, which have the little lock thing on the back so that you orientate them correctly, which is nice. It means your flat's going to be in the right place. Um, some of our landing gear components, um, control stick, uh, landing gear, um, outer doors. There's our lower wing. And, um, some other bits and pieces. Just flip that over. Okay, sprue B, um, we've got our upper wing surfaces there and our tail bits. And I'm not sure, no, we haven't. Thought we had a bit of sink there, but we don't. Um, then we've got these drop tanks, which have got some nice little uh, mounting details on. That's our tail there. Tanks and lots of detail on the upper wing surfaces, but quite heavily done. Our final um, grey blue plastic sprue is um, E, so they must have several different options for different formats. Um, and we've got on here the um, radio antennas, one of mine is being slightly damaged in the bag. Um, but I'm not going to go on about it all being in one bag. They're not the only people that do it. Uh, we've got our two fuselage halves, um, which are quite nicely done, actually. Um, the, the panel lines are perhaps slightly better on here, but still a little bit overdone, I think. But you've got some nice textures on, on the in, overall. Uh, we've got our little cockpit barrel. Just got some nice detail, and we'll look at that more closely in a sec. Um, our simple seat, completely flat um, for the for the decals. There's no um, no dials or anything moulded in there. And then we have a legless pilot. So let's just have a look at our cockpit tub. See, there's some detail in there. Remember, we're 172. Sometimes, when I've looked at a number of 148, um, that they, these can look a little bit simple, but that's the idea. We have no eject pin marks though on the visible inside areas, so that's always a bonus. 
yeah, quite nice. Let's have a look at the clear parts. So finally our clear parts, and they are certainly lovely and clear. Uh, the front windshield has uh, some of the fuselage on, which will make painting just that bit easier. Um, yeah, uh, the detail is quite pronounced, so nice and easy to hand paint. Um, yeah, I think that looks quite nice. It's certainly crystal clear. Um, there is a bit of distortion in them. Um, I wouldn't say it was horrific, but I've seen, I have seen better. Um, but they'll certainly do the job. So there you have it. Airfixer's 1 to 72 scale Mischief Spit ME262B 1A slash U1. Um, so you get two variants in the kit, with or without the uh, night fighter um, radar equipment on the front. You get three decal options on two different paint schemes. What are my first impressions? Well, it's a 2017 tool. And as most people know, if you've seen the first impressions on this channel, certainly, um, the Airfix have travelled a long way in five years. Um, and that that shows we some of the things that Airfix were criticised for do appear in this kit. We've got some soft moulding, we've got some oversimplification, we've got um, panel line detail that's that's a little bit oversized. But if we put all that to one side, um, what we've got is an accurately depicted two six two. Um, if you uh, paint it, particularly if you hand paint it, which tends to close up those panel lines a little bit anyway, uh, you, there's a tendency to put more paint down with, with hand painting, um, then uh, I, I think you've got something that looks perfectly good and will be a nice display piece. And I think it's a lovely little twist that we've got the um, UK captured um, RAF decals. So for me, that's one of the highlights, the fact that we've got uh, another option in there and, and uh, we've got some good decal options uh, and we can do something with a captured version, which is a little bit more unusual. So I, so I particularly like that. Um, low lights, uh, there isn't really any low lights. I've got a slightly damaged part in one and when you look at those parts, yeah, they're a bit thick you might be able to replace them with, with some scratch building yourself, possibly. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it ticks all the boxes. It's going to do what you want to do. The clear parts are clear. Everything's going to fit okay. You're going to paint it up, as it suggests, and you're going to have a nice little um, aircraft at the end of the day. No, it's not going to blow your socks off. No, it's not going to be the best model you've ever built, but it's still going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it will deliver something um, that you're expecting. Does it really warrant the price tag? Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure. I was expecting with the price tag that it has that maybe we would see um, inside the engine panels or something like that. Uh, you know, some other, something a little bit more than just the basic fuselage, and we've not got that. So, you know, there's loads of these different um, uh, ME262s in this scale on the market, so it's probably worth shopping around. But you now know what you get in this Airfix kit, and it might be worth it just for that decal option. Hope that was useful. Take care, everyone. You enjoy your modelling, and I'll see you very soon.